Question? Go ahead. It should have, yes. Shanti fed it back. Okay. This is uh, Brian's mic, microphone, microphone, test one, two, or Jay's mic, either one. This is mic number one, microphone, microphone. Second mic, second microphone, testing microphone, second one, Jay's and or Brian's microphone. Yep. A cowboy and a bronco. The duo have one of the more dynamic relationships in all of sport. You see, as the cowboy climbs aboard the beast, he attempts to trick it, 
he tries to assert his dominance and control the uncontrollable. At the end of the day, though, there's really only one part of this matchup that has to respect the other. Because there is no question which one is more powerful and unpredictable. You see, the Bronco is always in control as long as the Cowboy can't fool him. Today in Stillwater, Boise State will look to buck Oklahoma State in Top 25 Showdown on national television. In a matchup that features two of the top offenses in the entire country, you can count on a shootout between two of the top gunslingers in college football. While that score will have to be settled on the football field, it's worth mentioning that the Bronco can also be deceiving. It pushes you one way, then pulls you the other, a move the Cowboy never saw coming. Don't believe me? Well, just ask that other team from Oklahoma how their bout with the Broncos went for them. Now, a special presentation from the KTVB News Group. Bronco Roundup Game Day. Oh, or we are within now. an hour of kickoff between Boise State and Oklahoma State, a top 25 showdown that we have been waiting over five years for. As you can see, fans are starting to pack the stands. You just missed out on the paddle, people. I'll be transparent here. They just stopped paddling the, uh, the side of the, the stadium like they always do on game day. But either way, welcome on in to the Bronco Roundup Game Day show alongside Brian Holmes. I am Jay Tuss. Game day is here. It is Finally. here. Finally. And those paddle people, they'll be fired up and they'll keep going. They'll be paddling a whole lot for this next half hour. I guarantee that they will. And by the way, uh, here's a tease to stick around for the full half hour. Brian's going to probably shoot off a cannon at the end of the show. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that for now. But hey, Good tease. Uh, this is a full team coverage that we got going on here for this Top 25 showdown. Back live in the studio is Will Hall alongside David McKenzie. How are we doing, fellas? Good, JT. Happy game day to you, D-Mac. Never better, brother. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> D-Mac's ready to go. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, oh, see, we're back here live here at the, at the stadium. <laughs> just, uh, we're back here. I just want to take a look here. Shout out to our photographer. Pan <laughs> over to where we're seeing. That's where the Bronco fans are going to be sitting over here. They've got a pretty good contingent that is here. And so you can see how big the section is where they're going to be sitting for the game. They're kind of filling in the southeast, or excuse me, this would be the north east corner of the stadium and the Broncos are going to be coming out of the tunnel that's right underneath them so we're looking to get a whole lot of game action on that end of the field because that's where the fans will be sitting for today's game and it's going to be a pretty good atmosphere we're looking at 85 degrees right now humidity up to about 75 degrees right now it's 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 pretty good when it comes to the humidity and we have some cloud cover out there but the fans mm -hmm. they are fired up for this game yeah they are and uh I guess before we move forward Let's tell you a little bit more, more about this matchup with the Roadmap to Victory. Bronco Roundup Roadmap to Victory is brought to you by Southern Idaho Tourism. Visit SouthIdaho.com. Two weeks into the season, the Boise State football team is a perfect 2-0. After kicking off the 2018 campaign with a 56-20 victory in Troy, Alabama, the Broncos returned to the blue last week and put on the best offensive showing in school history. Boise State totaled up a program record 818 yards from scrimmage, the most in an FBS game in two years. They also scored 62 points, their most in a home game since November of 2009, when they hung 63 on rival Idaho. In addition to all of that, quarterback Brett Rippon tied Kellen Moore's school record with his 16th career 300-yard passing game. Now it's off to Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Broncos will face their first ever Big 12 opponent during the regular season. If both of these offenses live up to their season averages, then we could see somewhere in the neighborhood of 115 points scored today, along with 1,291 combined yards of total offense. Without a doubt, a win would be historic for Boise State. Considering Oklahoma is currently number 24 in the AP Top 25, a victory would give the Broncos just their second ever win over a ranked Power 5 opponent in a true road game. The last and only time that's happened? 2008, at Oregon. A freshman QB named Kellen Moore led the Broncos to a 37-32 victory over the Ducks in Eugene. Wow, I tell you, looking at the tail of the tape, I hope you like offense because these are two of the better offenses in the entire country. Boise State rolls into this one averaging 59 points per game. The cannon just went off. Uh, as for Oklahoma State, they're averaging 56.5 points per game. Both teams know how to put yards on the board as well. 
Oklahoma State averaging over 674 yards per game, and both these offenses are awfully explosive. The Cowboys lead the country with 22 plays of 20 or more yards on offense. You know, over the years, Boise State has had a number of victory over Power 5 opponents, though. In 2007, they beat 7th-ranked Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. In 2010, they knocked off 13th-ranked Virginia Tech in Washington, D.C. The following year, they knocked off a top 25 Georgia team that figured out just how good the Broncos are. And in 2014, Boise State put it to 12th-ranked Arizona in the Fiesta Bowl. Now, those are obviously memorable wins, but this Boise State team has a chance to claim the program's first ever regular season victory in Big 12 country, an accomplishment they're chasing. I would say like, like a legacy, you know, kind of like if you've seen with those other teams and they beat uh, Virginia Tech or they beat Georgia or obviously Oklahoma, they all left behind the legacy, you know, the tradition. And obviously we don't look at it like, oh, this is our legacy game, but we know that that is what it comes with. That's kind of the part of how our programs developed over time and that, you know, I think those games uh, are good for our program. This is going to be a great game, a big game for us. It's exciting for our team. We're going into a different conference. We're going into somebody else's house. It's not common. You know, I think our players a little bit like, all right, Oklahoma State, they know who they are because they've seen them over the years be successful. But now you're really diving into what's still water like, what's the stadium like, you know, some of those things, that's what kind of makes it fun for Boise State and Oklahoma State to play each other. Anytime you get to do that, it's obviously going to be a big game. And so there's a lot of noise about this game, but we try to stay focused. We try to block out the outside noise and just do what we have to do. So today, public enemy number one for the Broncos will wear number five for the Cowboys. Justice Hill cracked the 1,000 yard mark in both his freshman and sophomore seasons, and he's averaging 8.1 yards per carry this season. He's also rushed for over 100 yards in eight of his last 12 games, and since Hill stepped foot on campus, the Cowboys are 12 and two when he cracks the century mark. Needless to say, he'll be a focal point of Boise State's defensive game plan today. Justice, he's a, he's a great athlete. You know, he makes guys miss. He's very strong and, you know, he runs very hard. And he has great vision. I mean, from what I've seen so far, I mean, they might have a, a stretch play to the right and he'll cut it back all the way. Back. Hill finds the hole. Man, he's electric. He's a tough runner, very quick. One cut, he can get rolling right back to full speed pretty quickly. So, yeah, we're going to have our hands full. You know, we had to prepare for that this week. You know, we had to go out there and, you know, tackle the right way and get 11 Broncos to the ball over and over and over. Big, fast, physical, um, something that every great running back has. So, you know, that would be a good challenge for us. Yeah. Here's a live look at the field in Stillwater, number four, gearing up the Warming up the cannon, if you will. Uh, he cracked 10,000 career passing yards in the season opener against Troy. He passed for his 16th career 300-yard passing game last week against UConn. What does he have in store today? I will say this, Brian, a new uniform combo, kind of. They haven't worn this combo ever since they debuted their new uniforms last year. Really? Okay, so this will be something interesting to watch. And one thing I'm going to be watching, just something we've seen, and we talked about this the days leading up to this, and Rippon just kind of keeping his foot on the gas, and he seems pretty solid these first couple of games, like really focused. He does, and as we join the studio in Boise, you know, one way to slow down the tempo of Oklahoma State State's offense is to play a little bit of keep away. Wouldn't you say there, Will? Yeah, absolutely, JT. You know, DMAC, when you think Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State, what do you first think of? When I think of Mike Gundy, I just think of an offense and a team that likes to play fast play physical, and put some points on the board. Mike Gundy comes from that cloth of a, of a Kevin Sumlin, of a Steve Spurrier. Guys like to spread out, put the ball in the air, and put 50 to 60 points up on the board. And that's why I think Mike Gundy, he's a guy who likes to make it finesse, make it fun, and make it cool to watch. Yeah, the Cowboys enter today's showdown with the top offense in the country. Shouldn't come as too much of a surprise after all the pokes. I finished with a top four offense nationally in four of the last eight seasons, not to mention they are the second highest scoring team in college football this decade. Wow. Fun fact, trivia, can you name the top scoring team? Boise State. They're close. They're fourth on that list. Oh, Oregon is tops on that are they really? list. They are, averaging wow. 41 points per game. Two games into this season, Oklahoma State outscoring opponents 113 to 30. Bronco coaches and players saying a big key to the Cowboys' offensive success is their keep the foot on the pedal tempo that wears down teams. Hard. Yeah, it's really hard. You're trying to get scout teams to go out there and, and try to play fast and try to do what they're doing. Be on the ball after every play and, you know, we, we tried to assimilate that in practice this week and I feel like we're doing a great job at it. Fly around to play with a lot of effort and 
we have a lot of guys that are locked in, I would say, you know, throughout the week, being able to, to prepare for the games mentally. We've done two huddles at a time, so when one huddle get done, the other huddle is flying through, trying to run another play, and, you know, like I said, it just creates uh, habits for us to, you know, get back to the ball and get ready for the next play over and over and over and over. We welcome back former Boy State wide receiver David McKenzie to the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show. DMAC. Let's talk about number four, Brett Rippon. There's playing at another level, and then there's Brett through these first two games of this season. What's impressed you most? Well, what you see here, Will, is you see a guy who's who's done it before. This is his 39th start today versus the Oklahoma State football team. You see a guy who's poised. You see a guy who gets the offense, knows what defenses are coming or are, are throwing at him, and really is just reacting to saying, "Hey, look, I've studied this before. I've done this so many times. I'm ready for the challenge." You look at his, his opportunity ahead of himself today on the road at Oklahoma State. It's probably not a defense that Rippon hasn't seen in his career. Uh, what's his mindset like during road games, and what are you expecting out of number four today? Well, right now, during the week, they prepare, like you just heard Jabril saying, they're preparing versus defenses. They're preparing versus what looks uh, Oklahoma State's going to give them. So right now, it's just time to let it loose. And you know, Brett always tells me his uncle, Mark Rippon, who's a Super Bowl yep. champion from the Washington Redskins, is always telling him different pointers and tips. Mm -hmm. So Brett's a guy, like I said, his 39th start. He's prepared. He's ready to go. And Oklahoma State, hey, you got to be ready because this is a guy who's well-seasoned. He's coming off a Mountain West championship season. He's looking to end his career with the New York Six Bowl Championship. And not only that, but we look at some of the new weapons that he's working with oh, on yeah. this Bronco offensive attack. Let's start out with Juco wide receiver John Hightower. What a fantastic game a week ago. Five catches, 119 through the air. Also the 55-yard reverse takes it for the house. What's John Hightower bring to this offense? John Hightower brings that explosiveness, that electric, like when you just to bring to the table where it's like a guy where we used to look at like a Chaz Anderson or a Shane Williams Rhodes when we used to watch Boise State on that 2014 team, that Fiesta Bowl team of saying, hey, look, we have a great pass to Thomas Burbeck, but we need a reverse. We need a jet sweep. We need a, a handoff or a shovel pass. He's that guy to spark it. Hey, it's like today you'll see in the game if it's third and eight, third and six, he's going to be that go-to guy say, hey, look, we need to make a play. Let's see what Hightower got. So we see John Hightower. He's a Juco transfer. Another newcomer to that wide receiver core, true freshman Khalil Shakir. Mm -hmm. We saw him number two last week. He got some carries out of the shotgun, a new little dimension to this Bronco offensive attack. When you watch number two out there, what comes to mind? Well, like, like a same, th same thing with John, another explosive person that you can add to your team. I mean, in the past, in the great Boise State past football teams, you've seen guys from Doug Martin to Austin Pettis to Titus Young to guys who can, we'll put a Grant Hedrick in there. He might get a, you know, a <laughs> wildcat formation. Yeah. So you see that in, with a lot of the last past teams, Shakir is that cat to where you have John Hightower on a deep pass and you say, hey, Shakir, get in the backfield. We'll give you a, a tall sweep, see what you can do with it. It's putting your great players in positions to make plays, and that's what they do. Just how difficult is that? You're a former wide receiver. You go from out wide to in the backfield the next play. As a true freshman, how difficult is that to do? I think as a true freshman, like a guy like Shakir or John, you know, those guys just want the ball in their hands. Yeah. You know, so he's just like, hey, look, if you're putting me in this, in this formation for me to run a tall sweep or a jet sweep, I'm there. I want the ball. I want to make plays. I want the crowd to yell when I'm making Making my play, so yeah, just excitement. You're the former wide receiver. Let's get your offensive perspective. How do you attack Oklahoma State's defense? They're knowing the Cowboys deservedly so for their offense, but their defense enters this showdown ninth in the country in total defense. If you're Zach Hill, Boise State offensive coordinator, how do you attack the Cowboys defense? You attack the Cowboys defense by doing exactly what Boise State has done in the past 10 years, which, which has made them super successful. S multiple formations, motioning, reverses, short passes, running game. Do what Boise State does. You don't have to do what they do, what Oklahoma State does, five receiver set. Do what Boise State has done in the past that's given you three festival championships. Yep. We're going to go double tight. We're going to go five wide. Yep. We're going to go no receivers. We're going to go four running backs. You know, just mix it up, do your thing, and you'll win this football game. Get you out of here on this defensively, Andy Avalos. The challenge, we all know it for Boise State's defense. What are some keys to Boise State having success on the defensive side of the ball today? I would just say being very poised, being relaxed and thinking fast and thinking quick. These guys have prepared all week of what this Oklahoma State offense is going to do. All they have to do is just settle in, in, uh, in their thoughts, excuse me, and just say, hey, look, we've prepared for this. Coach Avalos has been there. He's taught us this offense. Let's just relax, settle in, and be prepared for the next play. 
DMAC, as always, as you guys know by now, he is fantastic on the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show. JT, we're going to send it back to you live in Stillwater. This matchup today between Boise State, Oklahoma State features a unique coaching connection. Yeah, it really does, Will. I want to touch on your guys' wide receiver talk just for a moment, though, because David was talking about how much explosiveness John, explosiveness John Hightower adds to this offense. He had 174 total yards of offense last week, right? Well, uh, 116 of those came either after the catch or after the handoff in the backfield. So that shows you how dynamic he is. But getting back to... Oh, I guess you could say it's explosive in some way, shape, or form, but Mike Gundy's hairdo, the it, mullet, it, it, it's, it's eye-catching. It exploded out the back <laughs> is what happened. Yeah, it's exactly what happened. It is an explosive hairstyle because it has fired up a lot of people across the country. The mullet was popular, Jay, back in the late 80s, early 90s. I don't believe 90s. you. It was. Believe it or not, everybody had one. And now Mike Gundy trying to bring that baby back. You know, there are some interesting connections between Coach Gundy and Brian Harse. And, of course, Harse played quarterback at Boise State. He was the offensive coordinator there. And then he obviously became head coach. As for Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy, well, he was the starting quarterback for the Cowboys from 1986 to 89. He, too, then served as offensive coordinator at his alma mater before becoming the head coach in 2005. So those are the similarities. How about the differences? We begin with their haircuts. What, what, what's your take on Gundy and the way that he kind of goes about his job? I mean, obviously, uh, he, he seems more lively. In what way? Uh, well, <laughs> his, his haircut first and foremost. But I yeah, mean, like, we're he, different in that, yeah. <laughs> You know, he's a coach that's been doing it for a while. He's got experience, and, you know, I pay attention to, to what he does. I pay attention to how he does things. You can learn from guys like that. I have a lot of respect for him. I respect coaches that, you know, have been in a place for quite a while, have been consistently successful. That's a place that's got high expectations. All right, we're outside Boone picking the stadium. It's game time just right around the corner, and we found some Bronco fans out here. Let's hear it. Yeah. yeah. This is the Grant Peterson party out here. He's got everybody here. About how many people we got out here? We got about 100 people from all around the country. Give me some of the places. Well, Austin, Texas, Washington, D.C., Chicago, New York, uh, Pennsylvania. I mean, yeah. Bronco Nation. I mean, we travel. We do travel. Hey, check out this guy right here. You're from where? Iowa. Iowa. From from Iowa. How did you North become a Bronco fan? I followed them since my third grade. I watched them on TV and I decided, hey, this is a team that I want to follow. I don't want to follow the Hawkeyes anymore. So I decided, hey, this is my team. And this is your team first game? Yeah, I mean, I've been a fan ever since. And this is my very first game ever actually seeing them in live. This is amazing. Well, good for you. Congrats. Who's the Jersey folks over here? Hey, hey, All the way. Yeah, we love it. This is our fifth game we've been to. And how'd you become a Bronco fan? Same story as him almost. We were, when I was little, all my family's Penn State fans. So I was like, I don't know if I can root for Penn State. So I was like, let me pick someone in the middle of the West. And I'm like, Boise's the team. And that's uh, where it started. And you've been loving it since? Ever since. Uh, before the Fiesta Bowl, before uh, we got the, the big win. So we're loving it. Oh, yeah. Feeling good about this year? Feeling good about this game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see. They come from all over to support the blue and orange. That's the blue and orange, not just that other orange that's on the other side of the field. The blue and orange. And they're going to take all of this inside the stadium. Let's do it. Zoom in just a little bit. OK. Here's a live look at the field in Stillwater. The Broncos are warming up. 45 minutes to go until these two teams take the field. Uh, this is our vantage point for the pregame show, by the way. We are atop the roof here at Boone Pickin Stadium. And as I look down right now, I'm looking at the cornerbacks. And I don't currently see number 14, which is Tyler Horton, Boise State starting quarterback. Cornerback. I do remind you that he went to the injury tent just a week ago against UConn. So we're going to have to monitor this moving forward. But speaking of injuries, you know, when Boise State football players have to, or if they go through an injury, sometimes the mental challenge is much more difficult than the physical challenge. And well, looking for a little bit of help as he recovered from an ACL injury that he suffered about a year ago, a Killian Butler, number 81, a wide receiver who scored touchdowns in back-to-back -back games, well, he turned to a four-legged friend. Sometimes the game you love so much doesn't reciprocate that feeling. 
There are instances where your hard work and preparation can seem wasted. And the number one thing you look forward to every day Injuries are hard. is taken from you. It's more of a mental challenge than anything. In a way you never saw coming. As much as you're a part of the team, you're not out there practicing. One year ago, almost to the day, Boise State junior wide receiver Achillean Butler suffered a non-contact injury almost 30 yards away from the ball. It may have seemed like a harmless act, but Achillean tore his ACL. So by quarter number two in the second game of the year, Achillean's season was done. With the injury that I went through, I was really depressed because I haven't, I haven't went a year without football since I was three years old. You know, I came in as a true freshman. I played right out of high school, you know, and just to sit out for a year of football mentally, that was really challenging me. Looking for a pick me up and someone to help him through his loneliness. I love dogs, like any type of dog. Achillean decided to turn to man's best friend for a little help. I have a puppy named Boss. Uh, I got him just, uh, just to keep me like mentally like in a, in a good state of mind. Meet Boss, a nine month old pit bull who Achillean put in charge of his recovery. He's really unique. He's tiger stripe, brindle. Why'd you name him Boss? Uh, he looks like one. You know, it's like he, he's, a, he's like he's controlling. So like when I went to go pick him up, it's like he already knew that he was coming to me, like I was going to buy him. As Achillean worked his way through rehab to get back on the field, Boss provided his owner with the positive attitude he needed. And when Achillean was cleared to run for the first time this past February, you only need one guess to figure out who he ran to. First time I got cleared to run, I went and got his leash. We went outside and ran. If you're doubting Boss's effectiveness, Go ahead and think again. In the season opener at Troy, Achillean scored his first receiving touchdown since high school. It felt really good. It's been a long time coming, and it's, it's going to be more plays where that came from. He wasn't kidding either. Against UConn just last week, Achillean found the end zone yet again. For him to come back, have the touchdown, I think you could feel, you know, when he scored. I mean, you could just feel there was just a lot of emotion on that. It wasn't just a score, it was, I'm back. It's clear that Achillean is back. If you ask him, his torn ACL ended up giving him a new perspective on playing football. It's like a challenge. The competitors, they love challenges. And with those injuries and stuff, it's just grind harder, make me just push myself more. Along with a new best friend as well. Do you think he's played a part in this? Yes, sir, I do. Honestly, I really do. He's like a kid to me, you know. That, that really motivates me. You know, Achillean says that Boss loves to watch TV, so I have no idea if he's watching back home right now or not, but if he is, he's actually likely watching with a true freshman off the Boise State football team because Achillean makes a point of becoming friends with the true freshmen yeah. who don't travel so that they can watch Boss while Achillean goes on the road and plays football. Kind of a safe way to do the hazing thing, right? Where I go out of town, <laughs> you watch my dog. I was wondering where, you know, how that happens well, when he does travel. Just to let you know, it's, it's not necessarily hazing because he rewards them with the Snickers. Oh, well, then no, there you I go. I guess that's totally worth Payment? it. Payment? Sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but um, that's kind of, I guess, in a way, Achillean's new mascot, I suppose. But sure. When it comes to Oklahoma State's mascot, mm -hmm. Cowboy, it kind of seems generic. It does. At Oklahoma State, it's anything but. Anything but. Generic is kind of, yeah, you don't want to have a generic mascot. Mm -hmm. They've got one that is pretty unique in the sense that it once was an actual man named Pistol Pete. Well, you've probably seen this guy at all the Oklahoma State football and basketball games. It's Pistol Pete. He's the mascot here. But he's actually named after an actual guy. Frank Pistol Pete Eaton gained a lot of notoriety around here after he avenged the death of his father. In the 20s, they only picked up the moniker the Cowboys here at Oklahoma State. And he became the mascot, and he was the actual mascot leading the team out for all of those years until he died. And then he was replaced by this paper mache head and the outfit that you see here. How about the guy that wears it now? The head's much bigger and it's much cooler. When the man comes around. All right, so we track down Pistol Pete, Stephen <laughs> Vaconi here. He's a grad student studying business, but this is what you do on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah, it is. Stephen puts on Pistol Pete's outfit about 500 times a year. We start off with the boots. Yep, yep, yep. Tucking in the jeans. Tucking in the jeans. Yeah, so we can show them off a little bit. Yeah. yeah, the sweet belt buckle. Yeah, we've got a belt buckle that we wear as Pete, and it's got our name on it, which is kind of cool, you know, uh, just to be able to keep that afterwards. This is Stephen's second year, and likely his last, because unlike the chaps. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The chaps, brand new this year. We Most mascots only make it through two years, and he wouldn't be Pistol Pete without the pistol. Fires uh, blanks, blanks only, and uh, we just uh, 
use it to kind of get the crowd going. But what really makes the man isn't the clothes, it's the head. Designed by the Walt Disney World prop producers about 40 years ago. So we've had them for about 40 years. Uh, each year we take them in and we get them touched up. You can tell I have a crack in that. Probably because this beast weighs about 45 pounds. Yeah, and it you does. You put it on your shoulders. Yeah, we wear this all game. We wear this all game and uh, the longest I've been in it was uh, about two hours. So yeah, yeah. As much as he likes gearing up for games, it's moments off the field that mean more to Steven. Uh, that's what I really like. That's my favorite part about it is being able to uh, put a smile on people's faces, whether it's the best days in their lives like their weddings or birthdays or some of the hardest days in their lives like hospital visits. And we've done a couple funerals as well, as crazy as that sounds. What else is crazy? How many Cowboys fans asked to suit up in the sacred head? Answer is always no, but if you ask nicely, you might be able to pick it up. What's, is there a trick to it? Uh, I just I would lift it up by both sides of the hat there. You put this on your head. It stays on my shoulders. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Down on the field. Kip. Well, the Broncos continue to warm up, continue to get stretched out, still. About 35 minutes before kickoff here at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I can confirm that Boise State will be without one of their more experienced defenders in this matchup. Starting cornerback Tyler Horton is officially out of this game. Last week, I just mentioned not too long ago that he uh, went to the injury tent or the medical tent against UConn. He didn't return in that game and he won't be available tonight for Boise State as they get ready to take on a high-powered Oklahoma State offense. Okay, for a closer look at this matchup, let's dive a little further in. We head over there? Boise State senior quarterback Brett Rippon is off to the best start of his collegiate career. Rippon has already thrown for 667 yards and seven touchdowns this season. A year ago, he didn't hit that yardage total until midway through the second quarter of their game at San Diego State on October 14th. As for the touchdowns, Rippon didn't toss his seventh until late in the second quarter of their game against Nevada on November 4th. Rippon has been on attack mode all fall, especially in the deep passing game. On throws of 20 or more yards, he has completed six of nine attempts for 266 yards and four scores. His QB efficiency rating on those throws, 461.5. By the way, the average length of those four touchdowns, 49.5 yards. The average distance those passes have traveled through the air, 34.5 yards. In addition to that, most of Rippon's success so far has been in the middle of the field. Between the hashes, he's completed 14 of 22 attempts for 335 yards and four touchdowns. That works out to a QB efficiency rating of 251.5. Rippon's weapons have been extremely reliable too. Boise State's pass catchers have combined to drop only one out of Rippon's 56 pass attempts this season. Also, they're proving their dynamic after the catch, meaning once they get the ball in their hands, they make guys miss and continue to move the ball downfield. Here are your yak leaders this season. AJ Richardson actually leads the way with 86. Behind him, you have John Hightower, Achillean Butler, CT Thomas, Sean Monster, and Khalil Shakur. Against Troy, 20.3% of Rippon's 305 passing yards could be attributed to yards after the catch by his receivers. That figure spiked to 43.3 against UConn last week when receivers combined for 157 yards after the catch. Finally, it will be interesting to see Oklahoma State and Boise State battle on offense. Both are explosive, but operate at a different pace. The Cowboys and Broncos each rank near the top of the country in scoring and total offense. But here's the difference. Although they've each possessed the ball for nearly the same amount of time, Oklahoma State has ran 43 more offensive plays than Boise State this season. This is where tempo becomes a factor. The Cowboys run a play every 21 seconds, while the Broncos run one every 28. So which method is better? Only time will tell. And that was fired, okay. All right, welcome back live to Stillwater. A little over a half hour until kickoff, and I know that Boise State fans are probably hoping that it's a quiet day when we get to this next story, but this is a really cool game day tradition here at Oklahoma State we're about to introduce you to. It is. We're still on the roof up here at Boone Pickens Stadium, but we're with the ROTC guys from Oklahoma State. Kyle, Kyle, what's your last name? Gallagher, sir. Gallagher, where are you from? I'm from UConn, Oklahoma, sir. UConn, Oklahoma. So this is the cannon you guys fire. Why and when? Uh, we fire every single touchdown and we fire it to 
make sure to let the other team know that we just got a touchdown. So it's basically to pump people up, you know, get people's blood flowing, get them feeling really good about it. It's also just a great way to get uh, the Oklahoma ROTC, Army and Air Force, get our name out there. You know, we have a cannon up here. You guys How have awesome a cannon. How awesome is that? And this is an old cannon. Yes, sir. It's from 1943. It used to be an actual cannon that was used in service. We have a uh, we have an actual shell block that we use. Okay. It's just a 12-gauge uh, blank that goes off. All right. But this is still... If we wanted to, it's an operational cannon still, so that's awesome that we get to actually fire it off up here. It is. Okay, so we're watching the clock, the game clock down here. So at 30 minutes to kick off, it's now 34:25. At 30 minutes, you guys fire this thing off, and then the student body goes into a chant. What do they say? I couldn't tell you. you couldn't sir. tell because you guys are always up here. <laughs> exactly. But I think they go right into the OSU chant, <laughs> Cowboys. So we're going to see if we can hold off for that four minutes. But if not, this is what you'll hear yeah. on the ESPN broadcast every time the Cowboys make a touchdown. Mm -hmm. But as Jay said, Bronco fans are hoping old Packy over here is going to stay silent <laughs> for today. Oh, it's been a fun pregame show. Uh, we got to get going, but we will. We promise Brian's gonna sh gonna fire this thing off. So we will post it on social media here in a few minutes when he actually does it. But uh, for now, for Brian Holmes, I'm Jay Tuss. We're gonna send it back to the studio in Boise. Will and David enjoy game day, fellas. Take it away. All righty. Thank you very much, JT. Have a blast down there in Stillwater. We are on the the home stretch of the Bronco oh, yeah. Roundup game day show. A couple more things to break down with DMAC here. You think about today's matchup, obviously you think offense and specifically quarterbacks. Cowboys head coach Mike Gundy knows a thing or two about good quarterback play, having coached two NFL draft picks at the position in the last eight years. Gundy was asked this week about top quarterbacks he's coached against while he's been the head coach at Oklahoma State, saying Brett Rippon is right up there with the best of them. Yeah, he, they were good with him because of he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He was a good player. This team is every bit as good as they were. We played Georgia here. Georgia's pretty good. They had, they had Stafford, right? Another NFL starter. I think this, this young man's going to play in the NFL. I mean, obviously, I don't, it's not my job to evaluate, but um, they're a good football team. Some high praise for number four right there. Speaking of that Georgia Bulldogs program, Coach Gundy just mentioned, well, the Broncos have also played that team a time or two in their past recent history, most recently back in 2011, a game in which Kellen Moore helped lead the Broncos to a 35-21 win over the Bulldogs in the Georgia Dome, a game current Broncos safety Keikoa Nawahini remembers quite vividly. After all, he was actually in attendance at that one. I would say I went to the Georgia game over in Georgia with my dad and so that was just a really cool experience to be able to be in that environment over down in Georgia and to to see two teams go at it and to play hard is a good memory for me I guess. Honestly is is kind of a dream come true for me and, and every week I it's it's still surreal to me to be able to, to be out here to be playing in front of my family and and, and in front of a lot of people and to be able to have this experience. I'm definitely blessed. Alrighty, DMAC, a couple of uh, closing thoughts before kickoff here. Let's start out with this game. The opportunity ahead for Boise State on the road, Big 12 opponent, huge statement game opportunity. Just how big of an opportunity is this for the Broncos? It's huge. You know, you love hearing Gundy's comments about ripping. You know, he's famous with his quotes like, I'm a man, I'm 40, <laughs> you know. But um, I think this game for Boise State, is huge because not only are you playing a Big 12 opponent, but with this win, you're already 17th in the country. You beat Oklahoma State football team who's top 25, a Big 12 opponent. You are slowly but surely crawling up the ranks. If you get to 5 or 6-0, and oh, dude, you could be top 10. Yeah. And really right now, Boise State's not only fighting for that New Year's 6, but who knows if you keep winning your 9-0, 10-0, you could possibly, possibly be that number seven team who can maybe get in that number four spot in the playoffs. So it's a lot of implications with this game. So this game really is huge. You, you mentioned it. You win today. You not only set yourself up to be the front runner in the group of five, but who knows? Long shot scenario at sneaking into the college football playoff. Again, we have some time here. Right. Write that down. <laughs> we have a couple months to play out here. Uh, let's talk about the defensive impact. Senior cornerback Tyler Horton, one of the mainstays in this Bronco defense. He is officially out for today's game. What's the impact there? That's a huge blow, uh, but we always have a saying you know, on the football team is, you know, next man up. And it, it, it does hurt for about 20 seconds, but then you say, all right, hey, it's game time. Let's go. And I'm pretty sure the media is knowing about this. 
now, but Boise State football has probably known about this early in the week, so they've already been kind of making their adjustments, and Jalen Walker, who's replacing him, is a phenomenal quarterback and a great player and a super competitor, so they'll be fine. Jalen Walker, big physical presence to the back end of that Absolutely. Boise State defense. All right, DMAC, before we get to your score prediction, Biggest keys to Boise State having success today against Oklahoma State. What are they for you? I, I just think one starting fast and getting in a rhythm early. So even if you don't score on your first drive, maybe getting a field goal, maybe getting past the 50, something that gets the offense where they have some type of confidence versus Oklahoma State defense. That's number one. And number two for that defense, getting a couple, you know, sacks or getting a couple big hits to say, hey, look, we want to make our presence and our dominance, you know, alert early. We have a couple more keys to the game for you. Our second key to the game is stop the initial first first down for Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's offense rolls them up in bunches. That's how they get the flow and the rhythm going on their offensive side. Get off the field on third down for the Bronco defense and limit those first downs for the Oklahoma State offense. And our third and final key to the game this week is MOA help up Hunt, follow with us. Coach Harson said this week he anticipates all the injured guys being ready this week. That would mean having the services. A big number 55 available. David Moa is a senior leader, not only on the defensive line, but for the entire Boise State football program. After missing the last two games, his return would provide a big boost if he's able to give it a go today. And judging by Jay's tweets, he was David, as I say, he was on the field earlier today warming up. Looks like he's going to give it a go today as well as sophomore wide receiver Octavius Evans. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. How big is that for both the offense and defense? Well, defense, you get your leader back. You get your, your anchor, your captain back in David Moen. That guy is a beast. The Moa constrictor is back <laughs> in the fold. That's huge. And number two, you've seen all these players making plays. AJ, Sean Monster, CT Thomas, John Hightower, Shakir. But... <laughs> the big prediction this year was how big Octavius was going to be this year. And guess what? He hasn't even played yet. <laughs> he hasn't even played yet. So to get him back to, it's a huge, it's just a huge deal, man. It's awesome. You ready for a uh, final prediction? I am. Man. You ready to go? I am. The floor is yours. F for score? Yep. I would say uh, right now, top of my head, I'm going 38. Um, I'm going 38, 28, uh, Boise State. I think it'll be back and forth early. Uh, 14, 7, 14, 14, 21, 21, and I think that defense is going to start to get a gauge of what Oklahoma State likes to do, and I think Avalos will chip in a, a little um, strategy at the end, and we shut them out, and we end up going 38-28. Biggest key to success for, for you today? Um, like I said, I think it's, it's poise, it's relaxation within the offense, knowing what you want to do. So number one, I would say getting, getting started fast, getting some points on the board early, and number two, I think the defense in the first half getting a sack or two and maybe getting a deflection or even an interception early to get them in that vibe of saying, we can stop these guys, we can beat them, we can win this football game. DMAC, as always, appreciate it, brother. Absolutely, Thanks for the man. time. For David McKenzie, Jay Tuss, Brian Holmes, I am Will Hall. We're going to sign off on the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show. Quick reminder for you, this one kicks off at 1.30 Mountain Time, broadcast on ESPN. We're going to have highlights in reaction coming up tonight on the news at 5, the news at 6, as well as the news at 10. In the meantime, if you want to follow along on Twitter, we have the uh, – Bronco game day tracker in our Bronco Roundup app. You can follow along on Twitter. We'll keep you posted on how the game unfolds. In the meantime, though, enjoy the game, everyone. Go Broncos.